Welcome back to the Tide Room Hangar. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well, going into a great weekend. And today I want to talk to you about collector habits. Got some habits both good and bad. Basically, all of these habits are good and bad. They can be good, they can be bad. And I'm going to talk about it. Hopefully, you guys get a kick out of all this fun stuff. Before we get into this, I'd like to know in the comments below, what are your top five older figures, one year old or older, that you feel still hold up today? That still are great figures that you love, whether it's the way it looks or it just means something to you. But I'd like to know your top five in, in the comments below for a future video. But let's talk about these collector habits. Coming up. So the first collector habit is pre-ordering. Now pre-ordering is a good thing, making sure that you get your item and then it does not sell out. And that was a time back in the day when I did not ever pre-order anything. And I just waited for a review. I had plenty of months to decide if I was gonna buy it and all those kinds of things. And I think some people still operate that way today. And we're almost getting back to that. But for a long time, from mid 2018 to early 2019, right around there is when pre-orders started selling out fast and sometimes stuff would sit on the shelf prior to that or in stock at distributors for a long long time and you had plenty of time to order but then for the, a while there and especially in 2020 and 2021 things were selling out extremely fast now in 2022 it seems like pre-orders still sell out but then more stock comes in so it seems like we almost have the opportunity to watch reviews before we buy it now i still like to give multiple different versions a shot for myself, even if a reviewer hates it, I don't really put a whole lot of stock in that. But it is kind of nice to get other people's takes before you buy something. But I still give most characters that I really want a shot. Most of the companies that have done a pretty good job, including x Transbots and all of that, I give them a shot just to see if I like it or not before I completely give up on it. Now going to the extreme, the worst part about this is I do have multiple places I do pre-orders from. Sometimes I'd like to get something sooner. So I have this thing on pre-order at more than one place. Of course, Show Z is where I pre-order most of my stuff, but also TF Source. And if I have to go somewhere else, I would go somewhere else. TF Direct's another backup, but for the most part, most of it's from Show Z. But I know a lot of people that do the same thing. They'll have multiple pre-orders out at multiple different places and forget to cancel them when they get one. But see, that's not something you really can do with $230 figures. So the next question or habit is to display or not to display. Now there's a habit of people that do not really display their stuff. Or if they do, they display just a few. I've had a lot of great pictures submitted to me, including this one here from Chris, that is an excellent way to display and it homages both the G1 and the modern and it mixes together very well. So with that, I like to show different ideas on how to display, but as a collector and collecting habits, I didn't display my stuff for the longest time. And it was, wasn't was until about 20, 18 no about 20 yeah 2018 is when i really got deep into displaying i had one little shelf up until then and i would rotate a few things out on it but up until about 2018 is when i started displaying all of my collection and trying to have every character represented and all of that it was a quite a bit of work but it definitely was worthwhile and it was a payoff for collecting these very expensive high-end figures obviously when you display your stuff it looks so much better. You can appreciate each and every figure and all the characters. You can appreciate all of this so much more when, of course, you display this stuff. Now, the downside of displaying this, if you open something and you take it out of the package, it's used, it is worthless. So there's that category of people that still like to keep their stuff sealed because they want to keep a higher value on it. Now, the problem with all of that and that mentality, which I actually did kind of have that mentality for a while, the biggest problem with that is that product fluctuates the value of these things goes up and down and yes sealed is always going to be worth more than loose so with that if you're thinking okay if i display this for a little while but then i get something better in the future i kept my old item sealed i could sell it for more later that is true but did you truly enjoy that item leaving it in a sealed box for a long time and so those are things that you have to weigh back and forth I just have to say that I've really enjoyed displaying my stuff and taking them out, opening them, and getting the full enjoyment out of them over the past few years, especially since 2018 when I went all in on displays. The next question is to transform or not to transform. And so getting to see the alt mode, the something about collecting masterpiece transformers 
or any Transformer line, for real, you get two, sometimes three or four or five, different items in one purchase. So you get a car and you get a robot. You get a airplane or a robot. You get all these different modes. And if you don't truly transform it, you don't truly experience both modes. Now, I wasn't a transforming kind of person early on either. I barely opened them out of the box. I opened out of the box. I was so scared to transform. I was going to break them that I didn't transform. I just l gently placed them on the shelf in a minor pose. And that was it. But look at this. You get to see the alt mode of these. And, and I'm not going to lie. I never transformed my blur back. So my, my fan toys blur is still eternally in alt mode. But getting to experience both modes and having two items or two collectibles in one is a selling point. It was a selling point. Back in the 80s, it's a selling point today, and you fully can enjoy it. Now, the downside to that, though, you do chip paint, you mess up the chrome, you possibly can break it. There is a downside of transforming. I've talked about a lot of that in the past, which is I don't flip them back and forth a lot. So the people that have the habit of constantly flipping, flipping them back and forth, some of them say they never have broken a figure. Or if they did break a figure, it wasn't. it was either their fault for going too fast or something along those lines. So there's a lot of people that like flipping back and forth, but nobody can argue the fact that flipping them back and forth does not cause some sort of damage to them, whether it's paint chipping or wear and tear, or they're not as tight and solid as they were when you first took them out of the package. But at the end of the day, that's another way to say, is this a good company or not? If you can flip a Takara back and forth 20 times and nothing happens, can you flip a fan Fansoys back and forth 20 times and nothing happens? Can you transform next Transwise twice? and nothing happened. So, you know, there's kind of something to think about, but do you transform or do you not? Getting into this whole opening it up and displaying it and then transforming it, well, do you keep your package? Once you've opened it up, do you throw your package away? And so I, I feel like the community is split on this and there's a lot of reasons why. No, a big thing about throwing the package away is space is becoming a massive premium and boxes and packaging take up a tremendous amount of space. And I understand the people that have to throw it away because they just literally do not have a place to store them. And so with that, I'm a packaging buff, I keep all mine. I've thrown away just a few bits of packaging and they just really were not worthwhile keeping. But for the most part, I've kept like 99.9% .9 of my packaging over the last 20 something years of collecting because I do know it has more value at the end if you choose to sell something and all of that. And I like the package art, but I understand when you don't have space, that's an issue, and that's a challenge. Although this conversation on Fridays is always about Masterpiece Transformers, when it comes to vintage, it's almost like there is no throwing that away. You, If you have it and it's survived for years, then let's keep it and keep it in as good condition as possible. So that's kind of the way I feel about it. It's the way most people I know feel about it. But it is very, very exciting to have vintage style packaging. But when I collect vintage stuff, I don't go after the end of the package because that carries a premium of sometimes upwards of 10 times the cost of a complete loose figure. Next, we get into selling the old or holding on to your old. So there are a couple of schools of thoughts. Now, I've talked about a lot of this stuff in the past, but this is a collector habit. Collector habit is I get something new. It's a replacement item. I like it better than the old. I initially sell my old. Now, I just had a video last week or the week before about uh, selling a selling video and when it comes to selling whatever the hot item is of the current month or two your old stuff's not going to carry much of a premium on the secondary market you need to wait almost a year for that stuff to have some value to sell you're going to be giving it away for a third of what you paid unless you wait so of course always remember that but the other problem is is what happens if you end up with maybe a uh, five of the same character I'm actually kind of curious to see if we see a fire sell on Fans Toys Phoenix when this guy comes out. So that that might happen, that might not happen, but who knows? See, the thing about it is the fact there's still a large percentage of the community, which is 30 to 40 percent, that are all in on official no matter what, and the third party kick, gets kicked to the curb. And so with that, I do see a bit of a large increase in Fans Toys Phoenix being sold off once this guy comes in, and it happens to everybody. It's a habit that so many collectors do as soon as they get the new one, they're really efficient about getting their old version up on eBay or wherever they sell, and I could see that happening. 
Now, this kind of rolls into another topic of paying too much for something on the secondary market. Now, once something has sold out from, say, fan toys, and it's usually fan toys, but X Transbots too, there are some gems in X Transbots that have gone through the roof in pricing because they're not on the market right now. And knowing that both those companies love reissuing stuff too down the road. Now, one thing about fan toys, they usually do something a little different with it for each reissue. And when they, when it's an actual new production run, there's something different. The pay maps are different, or maybe they call it a T or, or an M version, a toy version, a movie version, or whatever. But I've I've heard of people paying high prices for the Jabber now, and it's a good figure. It's great, and it's almost due for a reissue. If you wait, they might even reissue it the next year or two. I don't even know what to say about Lupus. The Lupus was a $300, $400 figure all day long. Now there's going to be a KO. There's going to be a reissue. There's going to be a flood. This figure is going to flood the market whenever it comes out, of course. And it's going to be one of those that you might be able to find even the official as cheap as the KO. The KO is going to be like 80 And then the official one's going to be around the 130 150 mark, something along those lines. But I'm sure we're going to see sales on them because there's going to be so many options down the road. But I think all the people that spent three, four, five hundred dollars on this thing are going to feel a little bit crunchy about it when they start seeing these deals of uh, under a hundred bucks. Next thing I want to say is that collecting habit is you collect one thing that you like, but it becomes a gateway drug into other things, other lines that you never even thought about. So you're, you're in the zone of collecting and with Masterpiece Transformers, there are months. It'll go months without you even picking up one because there's nothing coming out. And yet we see this cool stuff like, hey, we've got some origins going on right now, and I had a little bit of money budgeted for these Masteries Transformers, nothing coming out. Let me pick up a few of these origins. Or or I'm gonna get in on this Mode 2 Attorney playset. Heck, the playset, there there are some combiner sets of Masteries Transformers that are gonna cost about what this Attorney playset is, even though we don't know how much it's gonna cost. I'm assuming right there. I mean, I'm gonna admit, even Star Wars, people who have never collected Star Wars. Or get, could get in it now. This is probably the best time to get in it because people are getting rid of their stuff and really tired of Star Wars because they haven't really done much for original trilogy collectors. And then the modern stuff, well, it's just not very interesting. So with all of that, this is a gateway drug. Transformers is a gateway drug to everything else. And of course, if you collected Transformers, you probably were collecting G.I. Joe back in the day too. So, so I can see a lot of collectors with the habit of starting with collecting Transformers or whatever you collect and spreading out into other things. And so with that, when they do that, or when you do that, or when I've done that, you start losing, I don't want to say losing interest, but not being as deeply and heavily invested in the first thing you start collecting, such as Masterpiece Transformers. Don't get me wrong, I still love Masterpiece Transformers. I get excited about all of the new releases, especially with something that we haven't had before, but there's other stuff out there too. The last habit that I want to talk about that collectors always do, and it's, it's quitting or stepping away. I see collectors quit or step away from collecting all the time. And what does that mean when you quit or you step away? Well, you come back to something new. See, when you take a break from something, your mind's not thinking about it all of the time. You just basically give up on it. You come back to it, you play catch up. Now that, that that's a double-edged sword, but it's fun and exciting. Like, oh man, I forgot how much fun it was or exciting it was to collect this. It was so much fun, exciting, and interesting. I missed out on a few things. Let me play catch up and grab those couple of items that I missed out on. And let me get all these new things that are on the market right now. Oh man, now there's a sell on this instead of 220. It's 160. That's awesome. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this Blitzwing for 160 instead of 220. If I would have bought it right when it came out, I would have wasted all that money because look at all these sales that are going on at three different places fighting with each other during a bad economy. That's fantastic. Maybe you take a little bit of time off, you find out that they KO'd this. There's there's rumors that they're KOing this guy, but still no pre-orders, no, unsubsta- no substantiation of it whatsoever. I would actually think it's time to get just a new mold. But anyway, taking a break and taking some time off from your collecting makes you appreciate it so much more when you do come back to it. If you come back to it and you don't appreciate it at all, well, then you're probably just out. But for the most part, every time I've taking a bit of a mental break from collecting something and I come back to it. It's so much more fun. But the downside to taking a break from collecting is the late tax. You will be paying a late tax for sold out items. It's just the way it is. Let's say these seekers all sell out everywhere. And if you're trying to get them 
even the KOs are going to cost a premium when the KOs sell out. So I mean, that's something to consider and something to think about when you step away from collecting. It is responsible to stay in your collecting zone and get the best deals that you can, but it is something that when you come back to it, just expect to pay it. A hefty price that you have to pay. So I've been thinking about these collecting habits over the last year or so, and it's kind of been the basis of a lot of the videos that I've made, and I'm compiling all those together into a collecting habits video, and hopefully you had a little bit of fun with it and identify some of the habits that you have, that you do, that you perform, and maybe I even give you some ideas in this video. Let me know in the comments below. Remember, I want to know what your top five old figures that you feel still hold up in 2022 if you put that in the comments below for me to help me in a future video i would really appreciate it let me know like and subscribe i didn't hang around